In Touch with Dr. Charles Stanley, reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ through sound biblical teaching. You know, you've probably heard it said that some people have to hit rock bottom before they really come to the Lord and give Him their life. That's what happened. Everything fell apart. At a time in my life when my husband and I separated after 30 years of marriage, I knew I wasn't going to be able to fix it or put it back together myself. So. I probably had a lot of anxiety at that point about my future. I had really tried hard to not be a divorcee. But as I began to study the Word and a lot of Dr. Stanley's teachings and sermons, I began to realize that through the love of Jesus, God saved me for a purpose. I was given the opportunity to minister to others in difficult times in their lives. I didn't really have a lot of passion about it until I found the counseling, mentoring role that I have with Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hey, sweet Liz. God laid it on my heart to start going to church. It was, I can't even describe it really, but for me and my husband and my daughter, it all changed. It just felt like home. My husband went from never talking about God to this newfound love of Jesus. He read his devotionals. He read his Bible. I watched my husband be saved. Five days later, he, he passed away from an accident. It hurt me to the core. I guess I had that question always like, well, why, why couldn't you left him here? You know, why didn't you save him and leave him here? Why did you have to take him? But then I, God would always just say, but he's with me. And I, I couldn't question that. Michelle is like a daughter to me. And we just had this instant openness and trust and the ability to communicate what she was struggling with and how I could help her. It was like meeting my long lost relative. She was family. We were both women that were walking alone and uh, that we could encourage one another and support one another. I was new to this area. She'll come and pick me up and take me places that she knows about, that she wants to share with me. Just beautiful countryside. Liz told me one time that she loved ice cream and that there was a new market that opened. So it was just something for us to do that was outside. It's a little drive to get to it, but you don't notice the time. We don't even have to talk about stuff sometimes. It's just being together. And that's how our friendship's always been. You can't explain it. If I'm having a bad day, it's like Liz knows, and then she'll send me a song or a verse or love. She sends me love. In the beginning, I would oftentimes maybe have uh, the attitude of, I'm doing this because he's asked me to do it or called me to do it. And I didn't understand that the person that I would be mentoring would be someone that would bless my life as well. She makes me joyful, and so it's contagious. It's like being in a little time warp, but when God brings two people together, it's unshakable. It's like Jesus put her right there to say, here you go. This is the way. That's one thing I learned from Dr. Stanley. Don't stay stuck in the brokenness of your past, but do what you have to do to be healed and to help others heal. Michelle has just been that person that I could see that reflected in. Oh my goodness, that just warms my heart so much. Next on In Touch, being an encourager. Who is the encourager in your life? The person who supports you when you need it? 
The person who stimulates your mind and your thinking to say you can keep going, the person who sort of fires you up, motivates you when you need to be fired up, motivated. Everybody needs an encourager. And the truth is all of us need to be encouragers. There are people you and I need to encourage, and all of us need to be encouraged because all of us go through those times in our life, whatever the situation may be, where we may feel a little bit down or maybe some experience came along that uh, disappointed us, maybe disappointed somebody else or whatever it might be. Everybody needs encouragement. And when I think back over my life, I can tell you who was the most powerful, consistent encourager in my life my mother. She encouraged me even when she whipped me <laughs> because she reminded me of why she was doing it. I was not impressed at all at the moment, but as I look back and realize what she was saying, I'm, she would say this because I want you to grow up and be a good boy or I want you to learn not to disobey me, but of all the people I've ever known, she was always there for me no matter what. And I wonder if you're that kind of encourager to anybody. Is there anybody in your life that's always going to be standing there no matter what happens? Because we all need somebody like that. All of us do. And I thought, what could be more helpful and more encouraging than the title of this message, Being an Encourager? We all need to be and we all need it for ourselves. So I want you to turn, if you will, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And the Apostle Paul, in these first 10 verses, is explaining and encouraging the people in Thessalonica about the return of Christ and what they're to expect and so forth. And then he comes down to verse 11. Therefore, on the basis of all I just told you, therefore, encourage one another. Build up one another, just as you also are doing. Then if you slip down to verse 13, and that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. We encourage you, brethren, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted. Help the weak, be patient with everyone. And so Paul talks about encouragement in lots of ways. But I want us to think about it in terms of how we not only need encouragement, but we need to be an encourager. And if you look uh, in the uh, Greek language, for example, the word uh, that is used for encourager is the word parakletos. Para means beside, kletos, call. And so... An encourager is one who is called to be by your side. When Jesus spoke uh, with his disciples the night before he was crucified, and that's 14, 15, 16 chapters of John, he said, I'm leaving you, but this is the way he encouraged them. He told me all the things that were going to happen. He said, I'm going to send you an encourager, a parakletos, that is the Holy Spirit. So that he was very much aware of their need of being encouraged because he called them, they'd walk with him for three years, and then he'd say, I'm leaving. And besides that, the way I'm going to leave, it's not going to be very pleasant. But I want you to know that I'm going to be with you because I'm going to send you one like me, and he's going to be with you, a parakletos, a helper, Jesus called. So when I look at that passage and think about what Jesus said, encouraging his disciples. I think about Jesus himself. So let's think about it for a moment. Jesus was an awesome encourager. And if you'll think about how he encouraged, he encouraged in his teachings, but also he was an encourager in his encounter with other people. He was always encouraging. Didn't mean that he didn't say some strong things, but he was an encourager to them. For example, let's just think about what he taught. When he gave them the Sermon on the Mount, what an, what an encouragement that was to them to hear him say all of these wonderful things. When he talked about prayer, for example, he said we could pray and expect an answer. 
Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. When he talked, for example, about uh, forgiveness, he talked about forgiving others just the way he had forgiven us. And then when he talked about anxiety, don't be anxious about anything. But he talked about the birds and the flowers and so forth. Everywhere Jesus had the opportunity, what was he doing? He was encouraging his disciples. Even when he had to mix that with the future of things that were going to happen and the way people treat us and so forth, he was always underlying it with a word of encouragement. So when you think about the things that he said, he was always encouraging. But what about the way he acted. What, what, what about his actions, for example? And so, can you imagine how encouraging it was when they were out in the storm and they thought they were going to sink and they saw this light and then here's Jesus, not swimming, praise God. He was walking on the water, coming to them to do what? To rescue them and to encourage them. Be not afraid. And then I think about when Jesus was walking along and he was on his way to Jerusalem, he wasn't going to come back this way again. And his old blind Bartimaeus, a poor blind beggar, ragged beggar, sitting on the roadside, and he heard that Jesus was coming, and he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And they tried to tell him, you're talking about a discourager now. The folks around him were doing their best to discourage Bartimaeus, and the more they said, shut up, the louder he got, until finally Jesus stopped. And he said to Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus said, I want you to give me my sight. And he gave him exactly what he asked for. Jesus was this awesome encourager. He could find ways to encourage situations and circumstances when nobody else could. But when I think about the Apostle Paul, he was an awesome encourager because he had indwelling him the great encourager, the Holy Spirit. He is just as real and true today as then. He'll do just what you and I need him to do in our life today, just like he did in their lives. He's the encourager, and he indwells us. And it's interesting that Jesus called him that. He said, I'm going to send you a helper, the paracletos, the one who stands beside you, who is there for you. You can, you can count on it. And then I think about how the apostle Paul encouraged and all the letters he wrote. So think about this for a moment. He wrote the book of Romans. He wrote all these books I'm going to talk about. In the book of Romans, he encourages us by saying, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. To the Galatians, he wrote, the Holy Spirit who lives within you will manifest through you what you can't do yourself, love and peace and joy and goodness and all the rest. When I think about what he said to the Corinthians, he said, I want to describe to you what's going to happen in the resurrection. I want to talk to you. I want to encourage you about your loved ones who've gone on before. And I want to encourage you about when your time comes, your body will go to the grave, but your spirit will go into the presence of Almighty God. And then I think about what he said to the Ephesians how he encouraged them. And he encouraged them by saying, you were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. And then he followed up by saying that the Holy Spirit has sealed you as a child of God. Imagine how encouraging that must have been to them. And then I think what he wrote to the Philippians my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And to the Colossians, speaking of the family, to encourage the family, the father, the mother, the children, and so forth. And then to Timothy, he wrote to Timothy. Both of those epistles were encouraging times for Timothy. So look, Jesus, who is our Savior, great encourager. The Apostle Paul, the great apostle, was a great encourager. So I would ask you, 
Is there anybody who knows you would say that you are an encourager? Anybody you live with, anybody you work for, anybody you work with? Any, would your friends deem you an encourager? Not just somebody that you work with or somebody that you know or a neighbor this that, or even, even a good friend. Do they see you as an encourager? Can you, in your mind, identify instantly who is an encourager in your life? You may be seated here this morning, and you may be one of those persons who says, I can't think of anybody like that. Well, think real hard. It may be true that you grew up in a situation or circumstance that nobody's ever encouraged you. Now, you may not even be a Christian, but I want to tell you why Jesus is an encourager, because he got you here this morning to hear this message, and I want to tell you how to be saved in a few moments, and so that your life will never be the same again, so that ought to be an encouragement to you. And even if you are a Christian, and you listen to this message, you ought to begin to be, a, watch this, a purposeful encourager that you intend to be, that you want to be, and that you, by your speech and by your actions, like Jesus and the Apostle Paul, you want to be an encourager likewise. So, when I think about that, I think about how, how does a person become an encourager? What, what do you say? What do you, what do you do to be an encourager? And there are two ways to encourage, by your speech and by your actions. And so, first, I want to talk about, in just a moment, I want to talk about your speech. How do you encourage somebody? And I encourage you to write these down. You can choose the ones you want, of course. Uh, and I want you to think about, for just a moment, who in your life, this moment, right now, that you know needs encouragement. You got that? You may be thinking, well, here I sit. I need it. Okay, fine. <laughs> so, first of all, I want to talk about how to encourage people in your speech. Now, this is, not, this is not a final list. This is just a suggested list. So, I want to begin by saying one of the ways that you can encourage somebody is by a sincere compliment. When you love people and you accept people, you want them to know it. And so... You give them a sincere compliment, maybe how they look, what they said, what they did, how they performed, all those things. Secondly, always tell them the truth. If you're going to be an encourager, you have to speak the truth. Now, the truth is not always easy for some people to accept, but if you're a true friend, a real encourager, you speak the truth. You speak it in a manner in which they can accept it. Thirdly, you agree with them when appropriate. If in a conversation you need to express your feeling about something, if you're a true friend, you agree with them when it's appropriate. If it's not, you don't have to agree with them. Then, of course, if you're a true friend, you pass on information to them that is helpful, not gossip, but information. A true friend is going to pass on to others uh, maybe something that they're working on or something about their job or something about their car, about their children, whatever it might be. You, you, in other words, you don't keep information to yourself. And I think as I think about my friends and people who are the closest to me, I love listening to them and what they're learning, and I love telling them what I'm learning and passing on helpful information. Then, one for certain, you pray for them. If you really have a true friend, if you really want to be an encouragement, you pray for them. Now, please don't raise your hand, but let me ask you a question. I wonder how many people seated here have a prayer list. I don't mean all the things you want, but a prayer list of people you pray for at least every day or sometime as a part of the day, or often whenever you pray. 
So, uh, people, do you pray for? Well, if you, do, if you don't have that list, you need to develop one today. And you want to encourage people? Only when you can honestly say, I've been praying for you. I prayed for you yesterday. I prayed for you last night. I, I, I've been praying for you. Listen, when you're praying for people, you're encouraging them. Then, you might want to quote an appropriate scripture. Well, you know what? Somebody is really worried about something, and um, you say to them, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication and so forth, you encourage them with the word of scripture. Now, there's a lot more ways that you can say I love you than that, but I just want to give you something to start with. Then what about actions? Sometimes all it takes is a smile. You're saying something. Because watch, you can't, listen, if you're angry, you can't, I, I, you, you can't even think anger and smile. But if you love somebody and you want to encourage them, maybe, maybe you're not close to them, but a, a smile. It says that you're thinking about them. One way to express love and to express encouragement is to be quiet while they speak. Don't always interrupt them. Sometimes we just be quiet and just let them say what needs to be said. And then one way to encourage somebody is to hug them. Now, you have to be careful who you're hugging. I do understand that. But my friends, I hug them. And so... There's a way to hug somebody in a gentle way because you just love them. And it's sincere. Then you want to serve them in some fashion. If you have a real true friend, you want to encourage them, you, you find some way to serve them, to be helpful to them. And then you always be honest with them at all times, even though it may hurt. That is, if I want to encourage you, I'm not going to be a false witness to you. I'm not going to tell you that you're right when you're wrong. And then uh, if I'm an encourager, I'm going to point you in the right direction. Th this is the direction you need to go in in your life. You need to rethink this. And one thing for sure I'm going to do is, I'm, watch this, I'm going to seek to motivate them to be their best in life no matter what they're doing. I want you to do your best. I, and, and encourage you once you do your best. And they will do whatever is necessary to help you do that. And then if, if at all possible, you may want to reward that person with something. Rewards work. And everybody needs to be, even, even if it's to say, you did a fantastic job. And you mean it sincerely, that's a reward. Or you could give them something financially or whatever it might be. Now, think about this. Encouragement has kept a lot of people alive. Words of encouragement have kept a lot of people alive. Thought they were going to die in the hospital. Doctor said, this is it. And you come to see them, and you encourage them with whatever words, and you pray for them, and you say to them, we're going to trust God. We're going to trust God through this. We're going to help you. We encourage them in any way we possibly can. And I think many people have been inspired to succeed in life by somebody's encouragement. I think most people who've succeeded in life, they'll tell you that so-and-so encouraged them at a particular time, and they never forgot it. You see, it doesn't take a whole lot to be an encourager. So all of us should be. Because Jesus was and taught it. Paul was and taught it. And all of us need to be encouraged because we live in a world full of people who are discouraged. Amen? Amen. And I want to say to you, if you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, the most, the most life-changing thing that you'll ever do, the most wonderful thing that you'll ever do, the thing that has eternal consequences in your life, Right where you are, no matter where that may be, or seated here, you can say to the Lord Jesus, I need your encouragement. 
I need to ask you to forgive me of my sins. I do believe that Jesus went to the cross and died for my sins. And I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me. I'm surrendering my life to you. And Lord, I do pray that you'll help me to be an encourager to someone else as others have tried to be to me. Your life can be changed right where you are, right at this moment, simply by asking for the forgiveness of your sins, placing your trust in Jesus as your personal Savior. Amen? And Father, how grateful we are. You've never failed to be on time for our need of encouragement. You're always there. So we just all would like to surrender ourselves to you afresh and anew today. To be encouragers to the people we meet, the people who need us, the people who are hurting, the people who are lost. And we thank you for the privilege in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been blessed by today's program, please visit us at InTouch.org. In Touch, leading people worldwide into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and strengthening the local church. This program is sponsored by In Touch Ministries and is made possible by the grace of God and your faithful prayers and gifts.